and glorious Trinity, one God. Remember not, Lord Christ, our offenses, nor the offenses of our forefathers, neither record us according to our sins. Spare us, good Lord, spare thy people whom thou hast redeemed with thy most precious blood, and by thy mercy preserve us forever. From all evil and wickedness, from sin, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, and from everlasting damnation. From all blindness of heart, from pride, vainglory, and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, and malice, and from all want of charity. from all inordinate and sinful affections, and from all the deceits of the world, the flesh and the devil. From all false doctrine, heresy and schism, from hardness of heart and contempt of thy word and commandment, From lightning and tempest, from earthquake, fire, and flood, from plague, pestilence, and famine. From all oppression, conspiracy, and rebellion, from violence, battle, and murder, and from dying suddenly and unprepared. By the mystery of thy holy incarnation, by thy holy nativity and submission to the law, by thy baptism, fasting, and temptation, by thine agony and bloody sweat, by thy cross and passion, by thy precious death and burial, by thy glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Ghost. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment. We sinners do beseech thee to hear us, O Lord God, and that it may please thee to rule and govern thy church universal in the right way. We beseech thee to hear us, O Lord. That it may please thee to illumine all bishops, priests, and deacons with true knowledge and understanding of thy word, and that both by their preaching and living they may set it forth and show it accordingly. We that it may please thee to bless and keep all thy people. We beseech thee to hear us, the Lord. That it may please thee to send forth laborers into thy harvest and to draw mankind into thy kingdom. We beseech thee to hear us, the Lord. That it may please thee to give all people increase of grace and to hear and receive thy word, and to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit. We beseech thee to hear us, the Lord. That it may please thee to bring into the way of truth all such as have erred and are deceived. We beseech thee to hear us, the Lord. That it may please thee to give us a heart to love and fear thee, and diligently to live after thy commandments. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. 
that it may please thee so to rule the hearts of thy servants, the President of the United States, and all others in authority, that they may do justice and love mercy, and walk in the ways of truth. We that it may please thee to make wars to cease in all the world, to give to all nations unity, peace, and concord, and to bestow freedom upon all peoples. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to show thy pity upon all prisoners and captives, the homeless and the hungry, and all who are desolate and oppressed. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to give and to preserve our use, the beautiful fruits of the earth, so that in due time all may enjoy them. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to inspire us in our several callings, to do the work which thou give us to do with singleness of heart as thy servants and for the common good. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to preserve all who are in danger by reason of their labor or their travel. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord that it may please thee to preserve and provide for all women in childbirth, young children and orphans, the widowed, and all whose homes are broken or torn by strife. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to visit the lonely, to strengthen all who suffer in mind, body, and spirit, and to comfort with thy presence those who are failing and infirm. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to support, help, and comfort all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to have mercy upon all mankind. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to give us true repentance, to forgive us all our sins, negligences, and ignorances, and to endue us with the grace of thy Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to thy holy word. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord that it may please thee to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to strengthen such as do stand, to comfort and help the weak-hearted, to raise up those who fall, and finally to beat down Satan under our feet. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to grant to all the faithful departed eternal life and peace. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to grant that in the fellowship of all the saints we may attain to thy heavenly kingdom. We beseech thee Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. O Christ.
Christ, hear us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan. Come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal on the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you. For all future generations, I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is a sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together Psalm 25, as printed in this book. <coughs> to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let not who look to you be put to shame. Let their consciousness be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love, and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord, Gracious and upright is the Lord, therefore he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right, and teaches his way to the Lord. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimony. A reading from 1 Peter. Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, and God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigure, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God through a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of God. Thanks be to God.
Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Show us your ways, O Lord, and teach us your paths. Amen. Well, I don't know about you, but I enjoyed that great litany. Uh, it's always uh, mixed feelings, so I will confess. Because if you read through them, you realize the fullness of our humanity and what it means to be human. Uh, and it's a great kind of reminder and list for us to go through and you know, really search inwardly at which one of those little lines we could put our name next to, you know, because that was kind of like for us all. But there's a lot of these that are specific to you. And I invite you to really think about that. And you'll have more than one in case you're thinking, oh, maybe I'll just find one. <laughs> no, you're going to find a bunch. And, and that's part of our journey into Christ is recognizing what our humanity um, is, is about, right? And it's not about shaming, because you can easily, if you're somebody who can easily go to shame, you know, then you're gonna make that about shame. But it's about the reality that as human beings, as disciples and being human, we are going to struggle with those two realities of living in a human body, what it means to be in relationship to other people, what it means to be in right relationship with ourselves and with God, that that is going to be part of our journey. No, no questions about it. What's missing for me though, is to go back a little bit to um, Ash Wednesday a few days ago. That feels like a few weeks ago, I don't know about you, but it's like, it was only a few days ago. Um, our reminder of our mortality, our humanity, and who we are, right? Who we belong to. You know, that God saw a bunch of dirt, clay, and saw potential in it. Saw potential in it and started molding it and said, oh, I'm gonna make a Randy. I'm gonna make a Tory. I'm gonna make a Shirley. Put your name there. And then after the creation steps back and says, ah, oh, it is good. It is good. That's God's nature. God's nature is to see the potential in every one of us, to see what is possible, the kind of what is the kind of life, what is life giving that we can all be living. God sees it in you and in I. And calls us toward that vision that God has of us. Always calling. That's what our conscience is there for. That's what those feelings are there for. We have roadmaps within us that are hard 
hardwired uh, into us to help us find the way to what is right living, what is, what is fullness of life, not only for ourselves, but for others. That we were each created out of possibility, out of a vision that God has of each one of us. And if you really get that, I get it. I, I have my moments where I really get it, you know? When you really get it, you know, the, the, to me, it's an overwhelming sense of being loved in a way that nobody, no human can give us. No human can create the way that God creates. You know, and to pray the prayer of help me to see what you see in myself and in others. Because it's so easy to see what we don't like in others. And that critical mind and the critical voice will go rampant. And if you ever read Proverbs, which I invite you to do, it'll talk about the danger of the tongue. Because it is a dangerous thing. I'm trying to teach that to three little kids, and that's it's quite a work. And it's quite a work for all of us. Because it's not only in our tongue, it's in our thoughts. And how we begin to pull back and say, okay, you know, help me to see, dear God, when all I see is critical, when all I see is what I don't like. What do you see, God? What do you see? Because we're our worst critics, right? We'll beat ourselves up probably harder than anybody else, too. But that's not how God sees us. God sees your perfection. Your perfection. And in this Lenten time, I invite you to a holy land. I invite you to ask the question, to pray to God, help me to see myself the way you see me. And show me the way to get there. Show me the way. Help me to see. And show me the way. And God will. God will show you. And with God's help, we'll get there. Although God will tell you you're already there. All we have to do is open our hearts, our minds, our eyes, our ears to receive. Many blessings on your holy Lenten journey. Amen. Let us continue with the word. Most merciful God, 
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. You're welcome to turn and wave and say hi and peace to everybody. <coughs> A delight to, to be with you again in this space, um, hearing the chant reverberating on the walls. Really nice. A few announcements that I want to draw our attention to. Uh, you may know uh, that the bishop is coming next week. This is, I will be sending out uh, some emails about this. We have nine confirmands, yay, good job, St. Luke's, that's right. And um, in here next week will only be for the confirmands and families and their sponsors. Hopefully we'll be able to fit them in here. The, everyone else will go to the overflow and those will need to be reserved. So there'll be a link to go to Eventbrite for a reservation to reserve a seat. There'll be about, I'm being told, probably 35 to 40 available slots uh, for seating over there. And then you're welcome to, uh, hopefully we'll figure out how to do the Q&A with the bishop. Uh, we'll probably take some of it as it, as it goes, um, see what he's comfortable with, and, and just have a good time with him. It won't be obviously our typical uh, visit, but it's been a while since we've had a bishop here. So this will be nice. It'll be nice. He's, he's, I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait for him to meet you uh, and see how awesome you guys are. So your presence here in Ada. Uh, so, so that's coming. And just a few things about our Lenten offerings uh, we have coming. Uh, since the bishop's going to be doing kind of the forum next week, after, after the week next week after that, I will start an adult forum uh, in the parish hall uh, where it'll be conversations so that you and I can start having some conversations. And even though it will be a year in April when I have, how long I've been here, you know, we haven't been together to have conversations. And I'm really looking forward to having some. So I hope that those of you who come can stay for that. And we will also have a Zoom link open for that. Um, Michael Ryden and his family are doing Stations of the Cross on Friday nights via Zoom and Facebook Live, so I hope you'll join for that. Uh, and Wednesday nights, our uh, organist here is doing 30 minutes starting at 6 o'clock, uh, kind of an organ meditation time. Is that how you put it? And we'll follow that with the, our Wednesday night prayers of, and healing prayers. And so that is open here, same seating arrangement and Zoom. Our, our, we'll, we'll probably have that on Facebook Live. So, so there's some ways that you can participate and, and have part in our Lenten offerings um, as we walk this journey together. Any other announcements? Walk in love. And let me say before I say the rest of that. Um, because of the litany, we're not doing prayers of the people like we normally do. But I did attach them to the end of the bulletin so that you can please pray for uh, those that we continue to pray for. And so it's been updated for your own prayers uh, in that sense. Oh, and I have one other thing to do today. So today we're going to commission. We have some new... Um, vestry members, and we have some new um, diocesan delegates. And I'm going to invite those of you who are here, whether you're old or new on vestry, uh, and if you are one of the delegates or alternate delegates, to stand where you are, and if, even if you're in the parish hall or at home, to stand. And so if I can get vestry members, delegates to stand. And in your bulletin, do you have a bulletin? Because you have some responses. And if I can get Christine to come up here, please. So I want them 
to see you. Okay. This is your new senior board, uh, which you voted on, so you guys should hopefully know that by now. And I, we're all very excited and grateful she's with us. Um, and so she's going to lead us off on this. On behalf of the Congregation of St. Luke's, I present Christine Pappas for Senior Warden, Suzanne McFarland, Philip Cody, Leonda Seamster, Katricia Pearson for Vestry, Royanna Willis, Leslie Mitchell, Phyllis Wallace, and Shirley Mixon for Diocesan Representatives. Have these leaders been elected by the congregation or appointed by the Vestry in accordance with the bylaws of our congregation? They have. To those who are coming on, do you commit yourself to carry out the responsibilities of the office to which you have been appointed? Do you reaffirm your commitment to follow Christ and to serve this congregation in his name? I do. To the congregation, will you do all in your power to support these leaders with your prayers, your honest yet gracious communication with them, and your willingness to help them carry out Christ's ministry in this church? In the name of this congregation, I commission you for this work and pledge you our prayers, encouragement, and support. May the Holy Spirit guide and strengthen you, that in this and in all things you may do God's will in the service of the kingdom of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, look with favor upon these persons who have now reaffirmed their commitment to follow Christ and to serve in his name. Give them courage, patience, and vision to, and strengthen us all in our Christian vocation of witness to the world and of service to others through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Sacrifice for us. Therefore, let us be the feast. Peace of the good. 
gifts of God to the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day. There's a crowd in there. Huh? There's a crowd. I need to get Denver. I 